Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at a book which has come to us from the Law Society, Law Society Publishing. It's one of a number of books in their series which they've produced. It's part of the Legal um, Handbooks series. It's this book here. It's called Property Development. There's a CD which is at the back which is very helpful. Um, Property Development, now in a second edition, and it's been written by Gavin Lachat. There's the front, there's the side, the spine, and then there's the back, as you can see. Now the books are hardback, and as I say, there's a CD right at the back. Then there's a useful little index, runs to about 450 pages in total. There are some appendices, model clauses for instance, a whole range of other appendices. Uh, deeds of release of easements and various other appendices all at the back and then we get from the appendices to the basic structure of the book itself. You can see that it's got paragraph numbering at the sides extremely helpful when you're trying to find things quite quickly. There aren't really any footnotes of any uh, outstanding note at all. There are one or two points um, concerning agreements and various other things. You can see a little very short footnote there but there's very little by way of footnotes. At the front you've got uh, the, that's the front page effectively. You can see here the other titles from Law Society Publishing which is in their handbook series and there are a number which are extremely helpful for practitioners. Then there's the chapter headings. Do have a look at the preface which is very good. There's some more chapter headings there. This has obviously been in a number of editions, this book. This is now the second edition. You can see again the rest of the chapter headings there. Then you've got the contents of the CT, uh, CD book. That's quite useful because quite often you don't get a content section, so you don't really know what's in the, the CD. There's a note about the author there. Then the various prefaces, which tell you what this book really is about. Very important. Then there are some cases. And then after that, there are some useful abbreviations because it's land law, so there are going to be a few things that are quite important. Law of Property Act, of course, features pretty substantially there. And then you start with a preliminary chapter right at the beginning, then it runs its way through. So say, heavy bish book, very good, very much in keeping with what the Law Society produce in the way of their legal handbooks. And they cover quite a lot of areas of law which are very important from the practice point of view. We've given it a title, um, A Practical Guide to Acquiring Land for Development plus the Relevant Transaction Structures with an accompanying CD-ROM. And that's really what the book is about. So if you're involved in, in acquiring land for any reason for development, this is the sort of book you will need. Obviously it's going to appeal not just to lawyers, but it will appeal to people who are advisors and people involved actually in the front end of a buying property with a view to developing it and then reselling it at a profit. And obviously they're called property developers, there are other words for them. Um, polite versions are things like property speculators and so forth. Now, people I've had quite a few clients in fact in this area of law, quite often they do have contractual problems so it is primarily in many of the cases a contractual issue that I seem to have been advising on in the past. What my wife and I have done in writing this review is we've said the following, we said if you are a lawyer acting for a property developer you need this book which is as I say available from the Law Society in their imprint Law Society publishing. Following on from its highly regarded first edition, which came out in April 2010, I'm recording this in the middle of 2014, so it's some four years down the um, road, this new edition has been substantially revised and expanded to incorporate a number of new developments that have emerged since the first edition was published. And granted, there are a number of excellent books on the market which are available on property development. But as a, as a subject is so diverse and complex, such books can tend uh, to deal with only one aspect of the subject matter, uh, which presumably in many cases will be easement uh, matters. So therefore, 
um, example possibly also of land options or restrictive covenant or even landlord and tenant issues but those are the, some of the, the areas where you can start having problems about what the burdens and benefits are which are actually um, attached to the property you've, you've purchased. The aim of the book therefore is to cover the main aspects of this multifaceted area of law thereby providing the busy practitioner and advisor with a practical guide to what's an often complicated subject. It may look relatively straightforward but land law as I'm sure all people who've read for the LLB um, and practice subsequently will know land law is not the easiest subject in the world and it's very complex because of the, 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 um, the, the, the huge amount of statutory um, uh, imposition which we have to deal with. Primarily then the book deals with the acquiring of land and is divided into two parts under the subheadings of site acquisition and transaction structures and part one deals with everything from preliminary investigations which you saw in chapter one that's including site inspection to drainage planning contaminated land and obtaining vacant possession the second uh, section gives succinct yet detailed advice on contracts and the full spectrum of transaction documents and that's probably where this will be of some importance for those advising legally the amount of new material in the book is considerable and reflects the important changes in property law that have taken place in the last four years. And as uh, Gavin the Shat, the author, mentions, the chapters on investigating title, planning, drainage, conditional contracts, option agreements, planning promotion agreements and collaborative agreements uh, have all been substantially revised to take account of changes and there's a new chapter on mixed use development which could well become more important in the next five years of the next parliament because of the squeeze of course on uh, the availability of, of, of dwellings and that, that actually is, is something which I think this book deals with very well indeed. The author also notes that it's vital for a property lawyer to have an understanding of what is known as the Community Infrastructure Levy, the CIL, which is summarised in detail in the chapter on planning. And as I come from a, a planning area, uh, I think the planning part of this is also extremely helpful for those who probably don't have that much knowledge of the really tortuous problems that you can have when you're making a planning application, dealing with that aspect when you're dealing with the local authority and trying to get your permissions. The book also contains a wealth of sample forms, checklists, contracts, examples of model clauses and deeds and much more, all of which have been revised and updated and are at the back in the appendices. And that therefore allows us to have with this um, an accompanying CD-ROM which can be used to adapt the materials to suit your individual requirements. Again, another very helpful thing, just, it's actually a good time saver apart from anything else. And for those in search of further information and authorities, the book provides extensive um, tables of cases, statutes and statutory instruments, which we would expect. And for practitioners under pressure, the book is easy to navigate with detailed table of contents throughout, uh, numbered paragraphs and a useful index at the back. And it's an ideal work for reference, in fact, in my view, not just for lawyers, but obviously for developers and landowners and advisors. Indeed, for anyone involved in property development, the book in this updated edition should be considered a must-have uh, purchase. And the publication date for this is cited at the 6th of March 2014. So, as I say, I'm doing this recording in the summer of 2014, and you can see again, just having a look at the book, what you've got to open it in the middle. You've got a few quite useful thing. This is mixed use developments which I indicated earlier could quite easily become very important. You've got little diagrams and again these are the appendices I'm looking at. The checklists in particular are quite useful. General property checklists there and again as I say in the the basis of the uh, book itself you've got things like the planning area. There's the planning chapter there which is quite detailed and it refers both to the legislation and to all the other things that you need to be made aware of. Anyway, I'd like to thank all concerned for an excellent contribution to this particular important area because you do get uh, quite a, a large amount of, of uh, litigation 
where there is quite clearly no agreement and we have to go to court to get some sort of sense out of what has happened. Um, but in its general, um, if I can use the word construction bar concept for members of the bar, this is an excellent book to know about in case you've got a particular question you need to, um, to consider. Anyway, thank you to Gavin Lachat and to the Law Society for an excellent new edition. Bye-bye.